He's dead, Inspector. Take him away. Inspector Draycott. You again, Mr. Uh... Andrews. Special correspondent, International Wireless. That's right. Uh, we're uh, kind of getting to know each other. Any chance for a statement on this new homicide? By homicide, do you mean murder? Uh, yes, I do. No homicide, Mr. Andrews. No murder. None of them be murder. <coughs> Suicide? Well, you could call it that. Not in court, mind. I call it a desire to escape the manifold miseries of life on Come this on, planet. In Inspector, there has to be some kind of evidence to support no all No evidence, these... Mr. Andrews. Just a dead body. Another Chinese gentleman. Nameless, faceless, homeless, hopeless. And like all the others, dead. No sign of foul play. No sign of poison. Just dead. I bet that fellow was dead before he slid off them steps in the water. You're wasting your time down here, Mr. Andrews. Why not try up west, where crimes are a bit more lively? Mind your back, please, sir. Sir? Uh, no. No, thank you. No, I'm asking for your help. I think we need you. Who's we? Who are you, miss? No, please, come with me. Miss, I, I, I'd just like to know where... I am so glad you have come to see us. How do you know my name? You are in Limehouse, Mr. Andrews. Everything here is both secret and well known. You have already met my daughter, Priscilla. My name is Dr. Lin. We both work here among our fellow countrymen and women, doing what little we can to relieve their suffering. You must have had your work cut out for you lately, Doctor. 27 men have died near here in the past month. You have taken a rather particular interest in these deaths. You alone among the reporters for the newspapers. It's pretty peculiar. Could say I smell a story. You don't think these men died from natural causes, as the police are saying? What do you think killed them, doctor? The death certificates say heart failure. Their bodies are taken to the morgue, examined. They find nothing. Heart failure. You think it could be murder? No one here will speak of it, but there is great fear. We had hoped you could help us. Well, I can't. But I guess I know someone who might. Most of these men have died more or less on your doorstep. If I was your patient, I wouldn't have much faith in you anymore, Dr. Lin. <clears throat> they are not all my patients, Professor. But those that are or were have no history of heart disease. They all work in bad conditions in the docks. They are poor, undernourished, and they smoke opium. An unfortunate and all too common vice in Limehouse. Opium doesn't kill. Opium addiction, however degrading, doesn't kill it produces a gradual deterioration. Uh, that is correct. Uh, these men have died suddenly from heart failure. No histories of leukemia. No pulmonary edema. No onychographosis. Uh, no. Uh, no preliminary symptoms whatsoever. It's an epidemic, Professor. We've got to do something. We? Oui. I think you've got your pronouns confused, Charlie. You'll understand, Dr. Lin, I'm sure. I have my own work here. This isn't exactly my field. Besides, 
The police seem to have removed all the evidence to date. We had such faith in you that you could help us. You were so sure, Mr. Andrews. He exaggerates. He's a reporter. I'm sorry. I'd like to help, but you really need a pathologist. The best in London are mystified. Uh, Professor Devereaux, if you would just examine one of the victims. Was 29 years old, came from Shanghai to London five years ago, jumped ship like many of them do. How did you happen to find out about him before the police? I know more about Limehouse than the police will ever know. Do you know where he was working? Dockers work wherever the ship is berthed, but this man usually worked in the tea warehouses. But you don't know which one? No. Do you know where he was living? No. I'll need to examine the body. You would have to have official permission. Very difficult. You'll get the same runaround I've been getting, Professor. Face it, we're up against an official blank wall. Well, I need something. Personal belongings. Something he was wearing. Well, I might be able to help you out there, Governor. You look like a real lady in that tidbit. Oh, I am a real lady, aren't oh, I? Yes, of course, madam. That's exactly what I was saying. <laughs> I hope they've been treated with flea powder, these hats. Why, Mr. Phipps, what a pleasure. How for you reciprocated, I'm sure. How are you, you old thief, eh? Hey, same old Mr. Phipps, eh? Always at your little jokes. Yeah. Uh, I hear you've uh, moved up west. Oh, yes, mm. just slumming, you might say. Was you after something in particular, Mr. Phipps? Yes. Uh, fur? You was always very fond of fur, I remember. Look, I've got a nice coat, a gent's coat, mine, with a nice musquash collar and... Hey! Hey, you. Come here. Ah. Oh, go on, get out of here. Go on, get out. And next time, I'll have the coppers on you. Good for you, girl. Phew. Still got eyes in the back of your head, eh, Alfie? Lucky I have, or I'll be skinned by now. You've still got your contact with the undertakers for the old rags off the stiffs. Mr. Phipps, if you please. Well, some of my clientele, very sensitive persons, you know, might not appreciate your sense of humour. <laughs> Have you or haven't you? Uh, yeah. Anything in lately? Uh, this lot came in this morning. Yes. Acetylmorphine, a synthetic, a derivative of morphine, but three times as powerful and potentially lethal. If an unsuspecting opium user took this new drug undiluted, the result would be instant death. That's what's killing these poor wretches, no doubt about it. Somebody's peddling this stuff around here on the cheap. But this uh, diacetyl... Diacetylmorphine. Is it easy to make? Yes, if you have the opium. I really don't know how we can thank you enough for your great help, Professor Devereaux. 
You could thank me by dropping this charade and telling me the truth. You are certainly a fraud, and you are certainly not a doctor. Onychographosis is the medical term for a sore toe. And I doubt very much whether this young lady is even related to you. Now, hey, Professor, obviously there's been some mistake. There certainly has. A doctor's consulting room without a bench for waiting patients, no examination table, not even the traditional stethoscope in your pocket. Not very convincing, Dr. Lanyard. I think we must tell Professor Deverell the truth. I am afraid we must. Why all this shilly shally? Where are they? They're only 10 minutes late. First they lie to us, then they offer to tell us the truth, and then they disappear. Don't worry, they'll be here. Oh, no, they won't. You'll never see them again, I can assure you of that. You are as pathetic and naive as a newborn ostrich. It's really quite funny. Our modern, smart, up-to-date reporter with his head in the sand. Hey, that's not fair. You went along with this, too, you know. The original nickel-plated chump. Priscilla, hello. You may go. Who are you? What are you doing here? Oh, Professor Deverell. How do you do? Now, please sit down. Look, this is my house. And we're very obliged to you for allowing us to have this meeting in such civilized surroundings. A meeting uh, which I should like to emphasize to you is secret. Most secret. On whose authority? Well, speaking for myself, on the authority of the British Secret Service. And for my part, on the authority of the United States of America. Now, you are not only an able scientist, Professor, but you have shown us that you are also an embryonic Sherlock Holmes, so that it may already have occurred to you that we are engaged in a clandestine operation. My associate and I are commissioned to prepare a report on opium-based narcotics. This young lady and this gentleman have been employed by us. Thanks to you, their work is now at an end. At an end? What about all those murders? This is the reporter. Andrews, this is a war, but it's a secret war. So forget about the murders. There weren't any. I've already written my story. Burn it. There's no story. And what if I don't? You both hold American passports, don't you? And this lethal drug? It's being made by someone in London right now. What are you doing about that? Ah, uh, the diacetyl morphine analysis is excellent work, Professor. Unfortunately, the drug has appeared elsewhere. In New York, they call it heroin. People are dying like flies in Limehouse right now. They're going to go on dying. Yes, well, uh, your president, uh, Mr. Taft, has called for an international conference to be held later this year at The Hague. Our report will be presented at that time. Now, we owe you a fee for your services, of course, uh, for the chemical analysis. Damn the fee! What about these people in Limehouse? Very small pawns in a very big game. Game? There's no use in talking to you. We don't speak the same language. We didn't come here. As far as you're concerned, we don't exist. Gentlemen, I've forgotten you already, and it's been a pleasure. Vet! Show these persons out. Priscilla. That is your real name. It is. Hope you're satisfied. You certainly played me for the sucker. Believe me, we had no choice. Listen to him. When he's like this, there's no knowing what he'll break. I'd like to break a few things myself. Yeah. Where did they get off? Ordering me about. Nasty looking blokes. Coppers, weren't they? Well, not exactly. They I'm not supposed to say. Oh. It's a secret, is it? Can't tell us what's happening. That's just it. Nothing's happening. Absolutely nothing. Good morning. 
calculations you wanted on your new magnification lens. Why is the human race so blasted stupid? 10,000 million cells. I estimate the human brain has over 10,000 million cells. You'd think that some people could manage to use a few of them constructively. I see. Got out of bed the wrong side, did we? I haven't been to bed. Why is it that we can see a catastrophe approaching plainly before our eyes and refuse to act until it engulfs us? The rabbit has more sense. He doesn't wait for the wolf to bite. You are not a rabbit, Professor. You're a very gifted man. And I suggest that you get on with your work. You cannot expect to solve all the world's problems. Only a few. What's going on here? What, what's this all about? Frank and I think we've discovered where the drug is being sold. You yeah. have? Well, uh, why tell me? <laughs> why, not, why not tell those other guys? Frank and I are working alone now. Alone? I don't understand. Frank is a teacher, and I am a student at the Polytechnic. But you see, Mr. Andrews, we are both from Shanghai. These are our people, and we cannot abandon them. Do you understand? Sure. Anything I can do? It is important that someone knows what we are doing, in case... Of course. You said... You know where the stuff's being sold? An opium den near the river. Not far. Frank is there now. But he shouldn't be there alone. He will bow, and then you will bow, and then you'll be given your pipe, and then you bow, bow again. Bow again. Yeah. I got it. Please be careful, Mr. Andrews. Call me Charlie. Most people do. Be careful, Charlie.
The only sensible course is for me to continue this investigation. But how can you? I'm a scientist, not a policeman, of course. But I'm equipped with the powers of deduction and analysis. I'll need assistance, naturally. Oh, naturally. Right, Professor. We can do it. Good. It's all settled, then. But I don't think you understand the kind of people that you're dealing with. Governor. She's tired. Come on. Upstairs with you. Your room's nice and warm now. No, no, please. No, no, Phipps is right. You need a good night's sleep. Come on. You're very kind, all of you. Good night. This way. Now, Charlie. This man you saw on the opium den, the Englishman, would you recognize him again? Oh, you bet. Ugly, mean look. Now, nah, I won't forget him. Good. Here. Professor Lombroso's study of criminal types. Scissors. I hate to do this, but Lombroso's theory of the innate criminal type is dead wrong anyway. Get me some cardboard and glue from the drawer. Phipps, help me clear off this desk. Do I have to do this all myself? I beg your pardon, Governor. I'm in Noah's Ark here. Noah's Ark? The dark. What the heck are you doing, Professor? I think that should be obvious. I am making a picture of your ugly friend from the opium den. You mean he's in that book? Pieces of him, Phipps. Only pieces. Uh, more. Here. Yeah. And he had a V-shaped scar. Here. Yeah. That's him. Hang on a moment. Oh, my golly, that's him. Yeah. I know that, Mug. Um... Badger! Wiggins! Are you sure? Oh. Who is he? Oh, 
Nasty piece of work. Fighter. Used to scrap with him when I was a kid. Alf, what's the Badger doing these days? Is he still inside? Oh, Badger Wiggins? No, he's out now. Got himself a job as a checker down at Cox's Wharf. You know, the tea people. <laughs> that makes sense. He's always been a bit of a tea leaf. Uh, then, of course, at nights, he's a, he's a bouncer at the Ram's Head. Doing all right. Came in here a couple of weeks ago. Bought himself a dinner suit. Silk facings. Cost him two quid. How can he afford something like that? I mean, McVitie don't pay those sorts of wages. Not the Ram's Head. Oh, well, McVitie, he still has the licence. But he doesn't run it anymore, see? The say Yank runs it now. An American, eh? What's he doing down this end? Well, they say they have uh, gambling in the basement. All kinds of goings on. Even boxing. There's Badger slaughtering the kids for the edification of the customers. Uh, of course, I don't know anything about it. Be Being an honest, honest citizen. citizen. Yeah, right. Right. I'll take it. That's the pub where Badger works at night. And in this warehouse during the day. Hey, the last two victims were found right nearby here. I want to see the inside of that warehouse. Go on, then, Gav. the same. Diacetylmorphine. Or heroin, if you prefer. There must be a ton of stuff in the warehouse. Worth something, eh? Millions in New York. New York. This is where Wiggins works in the daytime. In the warehouse, full of drugs. And with stairs leading down to a blank wall. And here's where we think he's selling the heroin. And here is where he works in the evening. The Ram's Head, a public house. 
now run by an American, which may have a gambling room in the cellar. But where do they make this stuff? There may be a connection between the cellar in the pub and the cellar in the warehouse. Or maybe not. Well, let's go there and find out. full of yanks outside looking for a bit of fun. Dollars coming out of their ear holes. Very sporty types. Oh, you were an ugly so-and-so in those days, weren't you? Well, yeah, I suppose I was. Wait a minute. You ain't awkward, have you? Hi. Good evening, miss, gentlemen. Yeah, he's the one I saw. Al Russell, out of New York. Hey, Charlie Andrews, put her there. Ain't she cans with Point Deverell here. You got a nice place here, Mr. Russell. Cabby said we could let our hair down and let her rip. What's your pleasure? We got a nice hot uh, crap game going. Now you're talking! <laughs> what do I have to do to get into this game? You should have. Well, we're all in luck. Boys and girls, you're going to make nothing but money tonight. <laughs> Bottle of champagne for my friends here. On the house. Hey, that's real swell of you. How about a bit of bubbly there, sunshine? Don't mind if I do. Come on, seven. Seven, oh, seven, come down from heaven. <laughs> Keep your eye on the cap for me, will you? All right. Not your night, huh? Well, like I always say, it's only money. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, got a great match tonight. Bet on the ugly guy. Can't lose. I bet you're right. <laughs> okay. The door. My guess is it leads somewhere underneath the warehouse. <laughs> How do we get in there? We need a diversion. Jenny, are you all right? Mmm. It's warm in here, isn't it? <laughs> Professor, look. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a fight to the finish between and introducing to you on my left from Stepney, Baby Boy Dent. <laughs> and on my right from Limehouse, our own Badger Wiggy. <laughs> Looks 
to hold you and avoid your breath. The best guy won. The best guy? Him? I'll let you three to one. I could take him myself, right now. <laughs> take it easy, pal. I don't want to take your money. Charlie, you get hurt. You must stop him, Professor. He was middleweight champion at Harvard. He'll be all right. Bloody cheek. I'll tear him apart. Let me have him now. All right. Carry him for two minutes, then dump him. Okay, pal, I'm a sport. Five to one says you can't last one round. You got a bet. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new challenger. One three minute rounds between Badger Wiggins. What's your name, young? Charlie Andrews. Come on, you are. Three minutes. I hope. you'd need to make the drug a miniature chemical plant it's monstrous where are we professor the vault probably was used for storing liquor we're directly under the warehouse here every one with a false compartment and a whole shipment bound for New York
Wiggins, come quick. I need you. Secret Service. <laughs> Professor, they're going to throw us in the river, aren't they? I think that's their intention. Sure, it's my intention. You'll be washed up near Greenwich before dawn. I've lost my hiccups. I am brave. Didn't think I would be. I never had the slightest doubt. OK, that'll do. Get moving. Aren't you curious to know how we found out about you? Sure I am. Make it snappy. The friend here, Mr. Wiggins. He's been selling your heroin, only he's so ignorant, he's been selling it pure, undiluted. You can shut your mouth. And people have been dying like flies. He's lying. No, he isn't. I knew you were short. I knew it. were manufactured in a concealed section of its basement. As Inspector Dracott of Scotland Yard received the plaudits of the public for his magnificent work in uncovering and destroying the notorious Limehouse drug gang. Uncovering, you hear that? The Commissioner of Police announced his immediate promotion to the rank of superintendent. No. God, all my work and I'm scooped by the police department. It's not fair. Whoever expected life to be fair? Thank you, Phipps. Maybe I could give the champion of Harvard a few tips in the noble art as practiced in Limas. No, thank you. Well done, Phipps. Oh, your generosity, Governor. Right now, his eyes were in your summer. 